Hello, David Diga Hernandez here. You're watching Spirit Church. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can spend more time with God. I often hear sermons about uh, that we should spend more time with God and that it's important to spend time with God, but I'm going to give you some practical keys that will take you into the depths of the Spirit as you spend more time with God every single day, no matter your work situation, no matter if you're in school or whether you're full-time school or part-time, whatever your, your circumstances in life, I'm going to teach you and show you how to spend more time with God every single day. You're going to want to stick around and hear that. With me today, David Harabedian, my guest, is joining me, and he'll be also adding to the, the message as well. Stephen Moctezuma is now going to lead you in some worship. Father, we just thank you, God, for this moment, this opportunity of worship, God. Father, I pray that you prepare our minds, our hearts, God, in Jesus' name. You know, wherever you're at, just begin to seek God and just thank him. Father, we thank you, God, for what you're doing, God. Father, you're good, God. Jesus, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Father, you're worthy. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Father, just praise him where you're at. Father, we love you, God. God, we praise you, God. You are worthy of it all. God, you're so worthy, God. Jesus. Oh, yeah. I'll just sing again. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Yes, you are, God. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yes, God. Father, we praise you, God. We thank you, God, for this, this lovingness, God. God, we praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Today, we're going to talk to you about keys to getting closer to God indirectly because as you spend more time with Him, there's going to be something that f fresh that comes on your life. And, you know, um, Pastor David is with me here today and many of you remember him from maybe, I think it's, been, depending on how we air these, it'll either be a week ago or a couple weeks ago. Um, but I was thinking and I was praying as I was putting this together, so many people right now in this time in where we are in the spirit, so many people just want to be refreshed and they're looking for a freshness to come upon their life. And that might be you. You might be one who's saying, I, I'm looking for God to endow me with a fresh touch from heaven. Well, this is what's going to happen for you today on the broadcast. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to prophesy as we, as we normally do. But today I'm going to talk to you about three keys to spending more time with God. Now, you've heard the messages on the fact that you need to spend more time with God. You've heard the messages on how important it is to spend time with God. And, you know, you may have heard those messages go, man, I hunger, I thirst for something more. I want to be that one who spends time in the presence of God. I want to be a person who's friends with the Holy Spirit, who reads the Word, who's close with Jesus, who hears the voice of God with such clarity that there is hardly any doubt in their mind. I mean, there are all these benefits that come from walking in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. But I want to talk to you on how to spend more time with God. 
And so my friend, Pastor David Herabedian, is going to be uh, commenting throughout the lesson. So I told you ahead of time, don't, uh, don't, don't hesitate. Feel free to just, just jump in uh, every now and then. Anything you want to say uh, to our viewers just as, as we're, we're, we're beginning this lesson here? Just that God's going to move in a powerful way today. There's going to be impartation. You're going to feel the presence in an unusual way today. And there's going to be an impartation for intercession and prayer and to be able to walk and practice the presence of God. That's it. That's funny that you use that terminology because uh, there's a really good book I, I recommend. I, now, just right in this moment, the name just escaped my mind. But the practice of the presence of God. Do you know the name, the author? I don't mean to put you on the spot now. You, you I know, didn't know it. But it's, it's, it's interesting because I just spoke with a friend of mine yesterday about this book. Really? Practicing the Presence of God, Brother Andrew. Brother Andrew, okay. That, that's just a side note. I'm, we, I'm not connected with that ministry in any way, but that book is a powerful book, and that's one of the keys that we're going to be talking about. But first, I want you to understand that likely you've been taught that man is trifle, which is true. And there's the scripture that the scripture does support all th the existence of all three, body, soul, and spirit. And often it's correlated, as they say, that man is trifled just as his creator is trifled. And you've heard that it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord spoke to me, and this was just a few years ago, about the expressions of His presence. In fact, we put out a teaching just on that alone, the three expressions of the presence of God. And I realized that just as God exists in three persons, so His presence is expressed in three ways. There is the omnipresence of God, the indwelling presence of God, and the manifested presence of God. God the Father is expressed in the omnipresence. God the Spirit is expressed in the indwelling presence. God the Son is expressed in the manifest presence. Jesus was, is, and will always be the manifested presence of God. I mean, all throughout the Old Testament, you look, I mean, you think of stories such as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they're thrown into the fire for not bowing to the king. And the king says, the fourth looks like the son of God. And this is reference to Jesus. I mean, he was there at the beginning. John chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Then John chapter one, verse 14 tells us, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. We know that Jesus is the expressed image of God. God the Father is incomprehensible. You couldn't understand him if you tried with this brain. For us to try to understand the Father, it would be easier for an ant to try to understand the workings of this iPad. However, God the Father is explained through the Son. God the Son is applied through the Spirit. God the Father is the, the, the posture or the pose or the subject. He's the one who, who is the very image and Christ himself reflects that for us. As he, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So we understand that the, they all work together. So God the Father is the image, Jesus, Though God the Father is incomprehensible, Jesus is the explanation of the Father. The Spirit is the application of the Son. So God is putting that image in you. God is the one who commissioned the piece of art. The Son is the one who posed for the art. The Holy Spirit is the one who paints the art. And you, your life, is the canvas for that art. The image of Jesus impressed on you, the image of Jesus reflected in you. You know, often we talk about reincarnation. We believers actually do believe in reincarnation. I know that sounds, okay, so there's Jesus was incarnated. That's good. He was incarnated because the word became flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, I have to go. And my brother pointed out, it was very humorous. He said, it's interesting because Jesus said, I'll be with you always. And then he left. He ascended right after he said that. And my brother Michael pointed that out, and I thought that was such a good point. But really, as my brother later, later explained, was Jesus would come through the Holy Spirit. It's like Jesus was the upload, and the Holy Spirit is the information. I was listening to a, a commercial yesterday on, 
a, a computer company that's putting out what they call the cloud. And they were talking about how the cloud knows no limitations because anyone can access the cloud from anywhere in the world at any time. That a multiplicity of people and companies can be on the cloud and using the cloud at the same time. The cloud can be aware of all things all the time. It can upload and download and they can synchronize, that they can communicate to one another through the cloud. Jesus ascended on a cloud. When Jesus ascended, it was the upload of the Son onto the servers of heaven. Now the Holy Spirit is Jesus on the cloud. And we can download that. Prayer then is not an upload, it's a download. And so Christ who was incarnated, now is reincarnated in you. And that information comes on you. You see, the issue with man is not a hardware issue, it's a software issue. <laughs> and when you get saved, you get upgraded. You get a new software, and that new software begins to work indifferently with you, your hardware. That's why you know that hardware can become damaged by bad software. Yep. Sickness was caused by sin at the very beginning. I'm not saying everyone who's sick is in sin. I'm saying that the root of it all came at the fall. So we understand God in this way. So when you understand that God the Father is this working with the Holy Spirit and this working with the Son. You see how they all correlate and I could go on for another, we could both go on for hours and hours and hours about the threes and how they work together and where you see them together and the first time they're seen in the New Testament is when um, God the Father spoke, the Holy Spirit descended like, I mean, we can go on and on and on and it would be an amazing teaching which we probably should do it at some point. But I just want you to know that God expresses himself in three ways and this has led us to the three keys of spending more time with God. Number one, it's spirit. Now what I mean by that, I'm not talking about spirituality, which is belief or even possibly a way of looking at life. I'm talking about the conversation that takes place between you and God the Spirit 24 seven, whether you are aware of it or not. I'm talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter two, I'm gonna go there now, 1 Corinthians chapter two. And, and again, Pastor David, at any point, you have a thought, because I know you have a lot of rich teaching on the Holy Spirit, and, and at any of these points, I want you to feel free. So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 10, the scripture says this, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in, this, and we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Verse 14, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The Holy Spirit lives in you because he communes with your spirit. You've heard me teach on the body, the soul, and the spirit. You've heard me teach on that the spirit comes to life when you're saved. And the spirit is like your antenna. Your spirit is like your antenna, and God the Holy Spirit is like the radio waves. So when people can't communicate with God, it's not that there are no radio waves, it's that their, that their antenna is broken, their ability to receive the connection is broken. So when you are fellowshipping with God, when you are a believer, this takes place 24 seven, whether you're aware of it or not. Whether you're conscious of it, whether you're trying to do it, the scripture says pray without ceasing. Some people say, how do I do that? Well, it's not literally saying every moment needs to be filled. It's just saying whatever you can fill with prayer, fill with prayer. Whatever moment you can pray, pray. But this conversation, this 24-7 fellowship happening on the planes of heavenly realms, outside of your understanding, outside of your comprehension, outside of your awareness even at moments, is occurring right now as you sit there watching this, as you stand there watching this. The Holy Spirit, He's taking the Word, the truth, the things that the natural man can't receive. He's imparting that truth into you and you're fellowshipping with God. Even when you feel guilty for sin you've committed, even when you haven't prayed and read your Bible, even when you haven't done things that you think that you should be doing to be counted as a good Christian, the scripture says that he is faithful even when we are not, for he cannot deny who he is. 
That is the grace of God. That is the mercy of God. In your spirit, there is this conversation happening. The problem comes not that there is no conversation, not that there is no relationship. The problem comes of getting the effects of what's happening inward to manifest outward in your life. But in the spirit realm, you need to understand that you are connected with God. I would liken it to this. When you were saved, you walked through the door of justification and into the hallway of sanctification. At the end of the hallway is another door called glorification. Glorification is when you're just like Jesus as he wants you to be. And so when you're saved, you open the door of justification and it slams shut behind you. No matter where you are in the hallway of sanctification on your way to glorification, it doesn't change the fact that you live in justification. My progress in sanctification does not affect my in immediate right standing with God through justification. The moment I say, Jesus, come into my life, that's when he justifies you. That's when he takes your sin, puts it on the cross, takes his holiness, puts it on your life. You're justified. It's done. There's nothing that can be done about it. You move through that sanctification. So being a Christian is not about being perfect but being perfected so long as I'm in the hallway I'm on my way to glory so long as I'm in the hallway I'm counted righteous so the door of justification the hallway of sanctification leads to the other door which is glorification and by the way the Holy Spirit's the one who laid out the welcome mat and we enter that place and we begin to move toward it and this conversation is happening right now I hear people ask me all the time, Pastor David, what happens if while I'm lying or while I'm thinking a bad thought, I die? Do I go to heaven or hell? I say, well, you're confusing sanctification for justification. And so the Holy Spirit is communing with you. You say, but I feel so guilty. That's your emotions. Your emotions are in the soul. They're not in the spirit. Inside, the truth is there, and the truth can set you free. So this is happening all the time. So you need to have faith in that. You need to understand that when you pray, it's not about begging God to hear you. It's about believing that he already does hear you. That when you approach the throne room of God, you will save so much time if instead of begging him to hear you, you believe he already does. If instead of begging him to accept you, you believe you're already his child. If instead of begging for him to forgive you, you know that the scripture says that he does not deal with us according to our sins. If you can overcome the mind battles of guilt, of doubt, of skepticism, of not knowing your identity, of not living in the place that you know you should live in your mind, in your heart, and believing the truth that you know is true, if you can come out of that, then you can enjoy the fellowship that is 24-7. So when this fellowship is happening, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. He's there with you. He's inside you. He's communing with you. He's working on you. He that begun a good work is faithful to complete that work. We are at His mercy. You see, not only could I not be spiritual without the Holy Spirit, but I couldn't even want to be spiritual without the Holy Spirit. So he brings that to life in me. So that's number one, the Spirit. And let me tell you the good news about that. It's done. It is being done. There's nothing you could do. In fact, Romans chapter 8, verse 11 tells us that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence, and we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, Spirit to Spirit, all the time. Now, I can teach other lessons on how to receive the effects of it. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's releasing Him into the rest of your life. You can pray in tongues, and when you pray in tongues, you release into the physical realm the benefits that rest in the spiritual realm within you in the outward expressions of your life. So that's number one, is spirit. You are in constant 24-7 fellowship with God. See, that wasn't so hard. You're already spending more time with Him, or at least you're becoming more aware of it. And that's often what I find about the presence of God, is it's not about bringing Him closer it's about becoming more aware of the fact that he's already near. He can't get any closer than within you. And God, when he gives the Holy Spirit, he cannot deal him in portions. He doesn't give some of the Holy Spirit, and then as you become more spiritual, he gives you more. No, that would be the reverse. Okay, There are no spiritual elite that get rewarded with power, rewarded with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can become spiritual. And so that fellowship is ongoing. Number two is spontaneity. And this is what we talked about in the practice of the presence of God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, In everything you do, do it as unto the Lord. You know, Christians often say to me, well, how much time should I spend with God? How much time do I give Him for it to be a good relationship? And I think the mix-up is that we look at God as if He's systematic when He's relational. Mm -hmm. And we say, well, if I spend an hour, we're good, right? I can go on my way. 
My wife is sitting here watching me tape this. I don't think she'd feel too good if I said, Jess, if I spend an hour with you, can I just go about my day after that? No. Jess and I spend time with each other throughout the day. A little call here, a little text there. I score a lot of points when I text her like a smiley face or something. Because, and that's what I'm learning, is there, there's not just the living together and existing and, and sharing your life. That's part of it. But there's more to it, which I'll touch on more. But, but, but that spontaneity, that enjoying the every moment, that you, do you realize that when you're driving in your car, he is there? When you're at work, he is there. In fact, I want to read this, uh, Psalm chapter 139. Psalm chapter 139, and I'm going to read at verse number uh, 7. This is what the scripture says, beginning at verse 7. This is King David asking a rhetorical question, uh, which to the answer is nowhere. He says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I free from, flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me, by, uh, and, the light, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is light as light with you. David is talking about the omnipresence of God. You know, it's funny is that God is the great mind behind the universe. He's the great awareness. He's not, it's not the collective awareness of us. He's only one being. He's, he's one, there's only one God and we're not him. And he's that one God. So I don't want to sound like I'm getting into New Age stuff, but he is that mind. In fact, there's, there, there, they're beginning to look into cosmology and you'll love this. Have you ever heard of biocentricism? Mm -mm. Biocentricism is, a, I don't know if it's a new thought in physics. I'm not a much of authority to say either way. But I was listening to this, this, this man give a talk on biocentricism, where right now they're asking the question in cosmology, you know, how did consciousness, what we have, arise from the universe? And biocentricism is now asking the question, how did the universe arise from consciousness? Oh, nice. So the model's beginning to be flipped and switched. God the Father is that great genius mind working throughout the universe and the cosmos, the mind that brought it all together, the mind that designed it all, the mind that when you make a mistake or I make a mistake, he can reconfigure everyone's life, your life and everyone's life around you to make sure that you stay in your destiny. And not only that, with having made those changes to the people around you, that they also don't miss their destiny. So that man's free will constantly going all around the world, billions of us making thousands of decisions a day, that God is able to reconfigure all of that on the fly as we go. That is a super genius mind. He is that great consciousness aware of all things. You see, to experience the fellowship with the Spirit, you just have to be saved and you have to cultivate that inner fellowship. You, you live from it. You, you become aware of it. You acknowledge it. You pray in tongues. You, you know, so that, that fellowship is constantly ongoing. But to experience the great awareness of God, you simply have to become aware of Him. Mm -hmm. Walking with God can be as simple as being aware of God. I'm going to say that again because... That's going to set some of you free. We, we have this performance-based religious mm -hmm. Christianity that says, if I don't spend X amount of time, I'm not a good Christian. That's like me telling my wife, I, I don't spend, you know, I, I spent my three hours, I got those in today. Am I good? Am I a good husband? No, it, it's more than that. It's a relationship. And that awareness of the great awareness is what causes you to become close. So number one is spirit. Number two is spontaneity. I'm talking about talking to him all throughout the day. Every, people ask me, how long do you pray? I say, I pray all day. And I really do. It's become to the point where I used to pray, Lord, help me get through the week. Be with me this week. And I'd start my week and I'd go about it. And then the closer I got to him, the more desperate my prayers became. I said, Lord, help me get through this day. Be with me today. My prayers now, every moment I'm saying, Lord, be with me. There's that song that goes, I need thee every hour, every hour I need thee. And that's the prayer. That's the Lord, moment by moment, be near to me. And as you're going about your day, as you're aware of him, you'll soon experience more time with him because you realize you're spending time with him in your car. You're spending time with him when you go to work. You're spending time with him when you go to school, when you're around friends, when you're with people. Not to mention that also helps you to live a better Christian life because now you're living a life in such a way where you're going, Father, that offended you, didn't it? 
the thing I'm watching right now, that reminds you of something that breaks your heart, doesn't it? And it begins to change how you talk, how you act, how you, how you go about your whole day. And it's this beautiful cultivation of the Spirit of God in your life that begins to take place. And, and you begin to walk in it. But it comes from being aware of His presence. Being aware. So number one is spirit. Number two is spontaneity. Spontaneous time with the Lord all throughout your day. Become aware of the presence of God. Walking is awareness. Number three, seclusion. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the one that we get confused. They say, well, if I pray three hours, is that good? Is that one hour is good? Now, I spend time with my wife all throughout the day, every day. I communicate with her every day. We also know that we're connected in spirit, right? So we, we know that the, the covenant of our marriage is what primarily keeps us. And then after that, it's the time we spend together all throughout the day. But then what adds to that is when I take her on a date. Mm-hmm. Now, she doesn't want to date 24-7. She'd love that right? God would love to spend 24-7 where we're just secluded, but he realizes, the scripture says he realizes that we're weak, that we're dust. Yeah, God wants to spend every moment he possibly can in seclusion with you, but he's also gracious and understanding. He knows that we have responsibilities. He knows that we're a creation bound within the limitations of the dimension of time for now. And so he's not going to demand all of your time, but he is going to appreciate when you give it to him. And he, that's how gracious and humble he is, that he's God. And he says, you know what? I will, I will allow you to block out certain times for me, even though I gave you life. And so we shouldn't feel guilty for living life and having a life. But we also should recognize that, number one, I'm fellowshipping with him spirit to spirit. Number two, I can fellowship with him all throughout the day, every day. And then number three, I got to plan those special moments where I seclude myself. Now, some seasons of your life, you're going to get more of that than less. Just like some seasons of marriage, you get more of that than less. And as long as you're working and you're, you're cultivating all three and tending to all three of these, these expressions of God's presence, it will amount to a relationship with God. Now, somebody says, well, I'm not after uh, quantity, I'm after quality. So I don't need to do that. Well, if you truly have quality, quantity will naturally follow mm-hmm. because the quality of His presence, the quality of seclusion I want to go and spend more time with God because I know the quality of that time. Matthew 6, 6, Jesus says, when you pray, go lock yourself in a way. Pull away. Get to some privacy. There is power in private prayer, and private prayer is revealed in public power. Mm -hmm. Some people, they have no public power on their life because they don't have any private prayer. Um, Talk talk to us, Pastor David, a little bit about just just finding that secret place. Because I know the secret place, I've heard you teach on it before. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalms 42, 7, deep calls unto deep at the noise of his water spouts, all the waves and his billows of his presence wash over us. We're renewed in the secret place, the most holy place. We talked about the threes. We talked about the Father, the Son, the Spirit. We talked about spirit, soul, body outer courts, inner courts, holy of holies, ask, seek, knock, 30, 60, (laughs) 100-fold harvest. Those threes are everywhere. Uh, Yeah. Time, matter, space, all of it. it, And it continues on Egypt, wilderness, Canaan land. He talks about in the outer courts, we have milk. In the holy of holies, we have strong meat. And in between, I think it's hamburgers and French fries. You know, we grow in the Lord from grace to grace and glory to glory. But when we get into that glorification state where we have left justification, we move through sanctification and we get transformed. If we, if we suffer with him, we'll also reign with him. Hmm. And that's where that manifest presence comes out. I wanna share this real quickly Please. about 1 Corinthians chapter two because it's one of my favorite passages. As a young believer, I just marked that thing up, 1 Corinthians chapter two. But in verse 16, it says, but you have the mind of Christ. I love that. I love it. But here's what else it says. In Philippians 2, 5, it says, arm yourself. I'm sorry, it says, let this mind be in you. Let this or allow this mind to be in you. Well, wait a second. Do we have the mind of Christ or do we allow it? Ah, but 1 Peter 4, <laughs> 4, 1 says, arm yourselves with this same mind. Well, is God schizophrenic? Of course not. It's an outer court's truth to allow ourselves to be justified coming into Christ. It's a sanctification process of an inner court's truth to arm ourselves 
with this same mind. <laughs> and then it's a glorification process where we think like our Father and our Father's thoughts lay hold on us and we have the mind of Christ. So which is it? Do we allow it? Do we arm ourselves or do we have it? And the answer is absolutely yes. It's all three. I love it. I love it. There's a, there's a verse that I really please felt continue. prompted yes, to please. share, and it's for somebody out there. And I was looking As for As Steve it. begins to play, because I feel like we're going to start prophesying now. It's about King Asa. And it says, Behold the acts of Asa, first and last, lower are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. It's also in 2 Chronicles 14, 2 as a parallel story of it. It says, And Asa, in the 39th year of his reign, 39 is symbolic of healing. In the 39th year of his reign, he was diseased in his feet. There was something wrong with his walk. He, he was at dis-ease in his walk until it was exceedingly great. Yet in his dis-ease, he sought not to the Lord, but only the physicians. There's somebody out here right now that has been seeking to the physicians. They've been asking God to bless their medications. They've been asking God to do this and that through the doctors. God wants to do it personally for you. It's time to look not at the physician, but up to the great physician because he's about to release healing to many of you. Asa's name, and this is interesting, Asa died in the 41st year of his reign after two years. The Bible says he sought not to the Lord, the great physician, but he only sought to the earthly physicians. Nothing wrong with physicians, God. Right, works through and to them. clarify, Pastor David's not telling you to not get at rid all. of your medication or not go to the doctor. What, what, what the Lord would have you to do is look to him as the source, and if God works through the physician, fine but he's wanting to work directly with you right now. And this is what's interesting. Do you know what the name Asa means in the original Hebrew? No. It means physician. Asa was called to heal a nation, and he did that. But in the 39th of his year of his reign, he got off base. He threw one of the prophets in prison. He didn't receive the word of the Lord. And what happened was he became at dis-ease in his walk. God's wanting to get you back on track with your walk. If you'll just look back up to Him, healing is going to flow. That's awesome. And you're going to be reconciled, and the manifest presence is going to be released right now. Now, I'm going to close up the thought of the, the message, because then, and then, um, and then we're going to begin to just kind of give words and pray for you. But the, this idea of spending more time with God. It's much easier to do from a perspective of grace. We don't spend time with God as if we're checking in time and punching a card and you know all that. It, it, it's it's not it's not like that. It is a relationship. We are, we're not bound by legalism, nor do we tread the extremes of liberty or liberalism. But we rest in the beautiful boundaries of love. And so, in other words. I see Christians, sometimes they make their whole Christianity about not sinning. And that's like making a whole marriage about not cheating. You don't do that. But it's not just about not cheating. It's about loving that person. And with the Lord, it's not about not sinning. It's about loving Him. And that love draws you in deeper. And this sense of obligation needs to be broken off of you. Yes, there is some discipline to prayer. I'm not going to say you can just lie there for an hour and say nothing. Yes, there is some, um, you know, there's some habits that you have to do practically, especially for that third key, which is uh, seclusion. But overall, you need to understand that you're playing from a place of acceptance, not to be accepted. You've already been accepted. And so because of that, respond. So again, number one, it's the spirit. 24-7 conversation constantly going. Number two spontaneity. Be aware of the presence of God in spontaneous moments all throughout your day. And then number three, seclusion. Those are the special dates that you set aside, that special time that goes to cultivate a greater atmosphere. Now, I want to pray with you. And as we're praying, um, we're just going to quickly, I don't want to, we can't spend too much time per word of knowledge uh, because we are drawing this to a close now, but I do want to begin to prophesy and pray. So Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray you begin to speak right now in Jesus' name. 
Pastor David, if the Lord shows you anything, just... Can... There's somebody with bursitis in a shoulder, and it's been chronic, and the Lord is healing you right now. I command that thing to loose hold right now and to be recreated, and the bursa sac to begin to function properly. Jesus. Just move it around, and you'll find that the pain starts to leave. And as you say these words, thank you, Jesus, more of the pain will go. There is uh, someone watching you injured. I, I see that you fell, and you're wearing a metal watch. It's it's one of those bands. It's almost like an el it's elastic, and the metal's like tied together. And you you fell, and when you went to fall, you 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 injured your the wrist on your right hand. God's healing you right now. If you'll just begin to act in faith, I pray in Jesus' name that the pain completely go from you. Jesus, we give you the glory. The Lord's doing some things in like joints mm -hmm. and shoulders. There's a joint, th there's a thing, my, I, I had a word of knowledge, my knee. When I start to, you know, move my knee and my hand goes to it, that's where the Lord is, where, you know, word of knowledge works in different ways. So just begin to receive it. Just say, I receive right now. Command. There it goes. I just felt it pop in my own. It's happening there. If you'll get up and begin to walk on it, you're going to find that the pain leaves and it's gone. And God's doing something recreative in knees right now. That's my right, but he'll do it in either one. And also ankles are being healed right now. God's doing something in like yeah, these were, this bones. Yeah, this is for and, someone. And you'll know because you, you, you got, it, it, it's something God spoke to you too. And it's this confirmation happening right now. I give you the glory, Lord. I pray that your presence and your power and your Holy Spirit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close it now unless God. There, there's a us. neck area. He's just doing things in in joints, muscles, ligaments, tendons, but right don't, up in don't, C2. Hold on, there's somebody watching. You, you were gonna switch this off as he's talking, and you, you were just you, in your heart. You you scoffed at what he was saying, and you said, "Oh no, he, it's 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 something else." Or it's, and you were gonna turn this off, but. God wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. God wants to touch you. Let his presence touch you right now. Mm -hmm. Continue with what you were saying. And so right up in this area of the neck, be loosed in Jesus' name. I just want to share this. We were in a service in Kansas City recently, and there was a man who had 95% cartilage gone in one knee and 85 in the other, and he was going to get two knee replacements. And as he came up, we laid hands on him, and instantly God did a recreative miracle. He began to step up and down on him. He was on a tree crew and he went to work the next day. This was on a Sunday. Monday he went to the tree crew. He's had no more problems. Cancelled surgery. He has full mobility, zero pain. Wow. And so God does recreative miracles in joints, muscles. We see it everywhere we go. Uh, it is the normal Christian life to walk in the supernatural. You are made to be supernatural. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So just go ahead and reach out. If we didn't call out a word of knowledge, your specific ailment, the Holy Spirit is still moving. You can just reach up yeah, the, and grab. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is definitely flowing right now. And so um, that's it for this edition of Spirit Church. As you know, um, we started this Impartation for prayer. Impart say that again? Release impartation that they have a spirit of prayer come into Oh, that's them. right. We forgot. Thank you for reminding me. I oh. appreciate that. So Father, in Jesus' name, for those who are watching who are requesting, Lord, that you use their life with the power of intercessory prayer. Lord, we impart... Actually, Pastor David, why don't you go ahead, because that's stronger on your life than it is on mine. Release that on them. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I release that Psalms 42.7 secret place. Lord, I thank you for beginning to visit them in the wee hours of the night and literally causing your angel to touch them on the shoulder and to wake them up, to roll them over to pray where they can just get out of bed on their knees and begin to pray. I thank you for drawing them in. Your name is like ointment. That's why all the virgins love thee. Draw us, Lord, and we will run after you is what the scripture says in the Song of Solomon. So I thank you for releasing your drawing presence for intercession in the wee hours of the night, visiting in dreams and I release dreams and visions. Put a pen and paper by your bed. God's going to speak to you in the language of the night of dreams and visions. And when you wake up, you're going to seek him for interpretation. And you're going to begin to have a whole new experience with him as you have accelerated growth and intimacy with Jesus. 
Remember, you can join the Spirit family by becoming a member of the Spirit Church. Go to spiritchurchonline.com. Everything you have there, you can look at all the past services. You can watch, you might be watching it from there. You can become a member. You can submit prayer requests. It's all there, spiritchurchonline.com. Uh, now, if you are a Spirit Church member or you're a supporter of this ministry or someone who's blessed by our videos and whatnot, you've got to go check out the ministry, davidhernandezministries.com. Check it out because this is more than just a YouTube channel that we do. We do worldwide ministry. We do television. That's not internet. That's cable and satellite in over 60 million homes worldwide. The television ministry is available. We do international events. We disciple believers globally. I have an itinerant ministry. We travel. We do radio. We do blogs. We do all sorts of different things, and you can help be a part of that by becoming a world changer partner for monthly gifts or making a one-time donation. So you can join Spirit Church, help support the ministry, get involved, get connected, support what we're doing, and God will bless you for it. I know that, and He's going to bless you, I pray in Jesus' name, over the top, that you would receive abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Well, that's it for this edition of Spirit Church. Thank you, Pastor David, for being here. Appreciate you being on set with me. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God.